Hi, my name is Kelly. I'm with the Washoe County Sheriff's Office Critical Response Team. I'm Livia, I'm a mental health member on the CRT team. The next phase that we're gonna talk about is phase five, it is the symptom phase. This phase is where we talk about symptoms that members might have, both physical, behavioral, emotional. There can be cognitive and spiritual symptoms they may have experienced on scene or that they could be experiencing now or could experience in the near future. The purpose of this phase is to reassure the participants that what they're feeling is normal and their reactions are normal reactions to an abnormal event. They can occur at the time of the event, shortly after, or they could still be reoccurring. The purpose is to teach the individuals in the CISD that these are normal reactions so that they can learn from them and not keep reliving them and have a healthy outcome and a healthy career. So the, the next phase that we'll go through is the symptoms phase. Um, each one of us is gonna, each one of my uh, peers is gonna take one of the topics. Uh, it's physical, cognitive, the emotional, behavioral, and the spiritual uh, effects of what you might be uh, experiencing having gone through this incident. Um, some of you have already talked about it. Um, so like with the physical reactions to this incident, um, the lack of sleep, uh, the nausea, um, uh, difficulty breathing, elevated blood pressure. What's that? Don't get me started on the nausea. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, for sure. In addition to? Yeah, no sleep and just mm -hmm. being pissed off at everything. And, oh, I can't even. Yeah, it's just a daily, daily struggle. So, oh, so with, like I said, the elevated blood pressure and things like that, if it's obviously too high, you might want to go see your doctor uh, to have things checked out if it's if it's too far out of out of your normal. Um, but headaches, um, uh, some weakness, uh, sweating, chills, things like that. Uh, those are some of the physical reactions that you might have to to what happened. Kelly, did you want to? Um. I'll talk about some behavioral. There's a long list, and we're going to give you guys some handouts and stuff to take and stuff to give your families and uh, and like that. But changes of your activity, if you're a runner and you quit running, right? Chris, I think you were saying something about running or going out and drinking more, or, right? So you want to be very careful that if you normally go home and have a beer, go home and have a beer. If you're going to the bar with your buddies and having a 12-pack, that could be a problem, right? So changes in your activity, um, maybe withdrawing, uh, being overly emotional, um, non-specific body complaints, just achy and tired and yucky feeling, um, and uh, loss or increase of appetite. But you guys know each other better than anybody else. Your families know you better than anybody else. So the big thing with that is just to watch for what is a changes to your normal, your activities, right? So sleeping for you, right? Maybe drinking a little bit more for you is not your guys' normals. So keep that in mind and when your family says, honey, you're kind of being cranky and I'm getting, you know, you're, you're right? Listen to them because they see it because we all go, no, it ain't me. I'm fine, fine, right? We're not fine. And that's okay not to be fine right now. You've been through a really kind of, I was going to say crappy situation, but um, that's okay. You'll get there. Another symptom that often comes up in these situations, especially where things that are unfair happen, are <coughs> changes in your spirituality and what you believe in. So it's not fair. Why did this have to happen? Somebody shouldn't have to have this happen. So if you find yourself either being driven to more <coughs> spirituality or avoiding spirituality, questioning the fairness of the world, of your God, whoever you believe in, that's number one thing normal. That's how we, we make sense of what happened. But you might wanna look for those changes and see if you can get some, some help or some guidance if you feel like you're making big changes in what you believe about your spirituality. Uh, another one of them is emotional and several of you have talked about having anxiety, having grief. Um, some of you are depressed about this and having some emotional control problems and controlling your emotions. And, and basically what we're trying to do is get you to understand that these emotions that you're having are normal, okay? They are a normal part of this process. And like this, Kelly said is 
we're going to give you this literature so you have an understanding of what's going on and you can see all of these things that you're going through and know that they're normal and that you're aware of it and that we the more aware of it that you are the 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 better ability you're going to have to recognize what's going on and if it continues over a lengthy amount of time that maybe it's time to uh, continue to call one of us you know talk to us talk to your partners uh, or even seek um, more professional counseling okay so just be aware of those behaviors and like i said we are going to give you a copy of this and so that you are aware of what's going on how, how is it normal when i go home to my wife yell at her and me just i mean I'm, I'm, i get mad easily just something and I, afterwards i feel bad because why would i yell at her my kid comes running down the hall wants to say hi and i like, go to your room i don't want to talk to you and i just sit down in front of the tv and just start from the channels how can i tell them that's normal well because you're saying it's normal reaction but is how it, do they... it is a normal reaction to the incident you've been involved with and, and that's why we give you the literature so you can also share it with your spouse and talk to you you have a good support system at home and you say, look, I'm having problems with these and these are, you know, I'm having physical problems, I'm having emotional problems. And if and you can also share this with her so she understands that if you do lash out at her over her asking you to take the garbage out today, that she can go, oh, he's having he's having a behavioral problem or he's having an emotional problem to some somebody asking him to do something, you know, something to that effect. It just helps her understand that you are still dealing with this incident that you were involved with and that you're not mad at her and so when it comes time for the the healing process at home between you and her that she understands that he really wasn't mad at me that he is trying to deal with this emotionally and it's going to help her also just be more supportive of you at home I don't want to be mad. I don't want to always, after an incident, always go home and be mad at her all the time. I don't want her to be the, my punching bag. And How do I avoid that? You're not going to be that way every time. And part of the next phase, once we're finished with this phase, um, is teaching you some of the new, some new techniques and things that um, can help you, um, it, even if it's taking an extra 45 minutes on your drive home to decompress. Uh, that was one of my... When I worked patrol, one of the best things that I, that I did, I, I actually lived an hour away from my from my house, so so that drive gave me that chance to decompress. And I mean, you you know how that is. It, that's that's what we all work in. Um, so to be able to decompress with that, and, and we're going to do, we're going to try and help you with s some techniques on how you can process that and, and help deal with that. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to go to sleep. Like I don't. <laughs> I just want to avoid it entirely. I don't even want to attempt to. I mean, I'm staying up all night. Why don't you want to? All night. When I lay down at night and I try to close my eyes, I see it, you know? Try. I'm like, oh, God, okay, nope, getting out of bed, can't, nope. Not gonna do it. <laughs> and it, it can take time to get through this. If with time, you aren't able to go on. Um, like we said, we'll, we'll get you in contact with some services that you might be able to do. It's just like um, if you broke your arm or if you had a horrible cut, you would go see a doctor. Um, this is no different than that. This is a cut or a break in your brain and you, don't, you can't fix that. But a professional can help you get through that and help you move on with that and try and mend that. Um, there are, uh, uh, therapy, counselors, um, even in, in some instances, if it's if it's necessary, some medicine that can just help you kind of try and get back on track until you can try and get some of these techniques and stuff like that to help process it. I just didn't then take the dreams away. Like, I just need, I don't know, I'll take a sleeping pill, but if I just, if it just, you know, forces me into sleep where I'm seeing this stuff again, mm -hmm. then I don't want to take the sleeping pill. You know, but it just, it's just, well, we'll talk again afterwards and yeah. then uh, get you hooked up with somebody. I appreciate your help. You're yeah, welcome. thank you. Thank you. You know, you'd mentioned you were talking to him about going home and being mad at your wife and your kids and, and stuff, and you gave some helpful advice to that. I can't even go home to my wife and my kids because, like you, like the dreams, you close your eyes, you see it. I see it when I go home. 
We want to be home, you know, and I love my family. I love my wife. And over all these years, you know, I have bad calls, like we all mentioned, we see it all the time. I'm, I don't tell my wife, I want to protect her, you know, I don't tell her anything. And all she knows is now that I'm not coming home as much, or I maybe come home and I smell like a drink or two, you know, and I don't need that stress either, you know. I, I just don't know what to do. You know, I don't know where to go, what to do. You married your wife for a reason, right? Of course. You love her, right? Yeah. Do you trust her? Then you can talk to her a little bit. You know, you don't have to tell her about all the blood and guts. No, but I but see, when I see her, I see, I can't get over this that This event either. specifically? Yeah. I get that. But in general, you can still, once you get through this, you can still maybe incorporate her a little bit more in that, work on that communication. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with writing it down, typing it on your computer, and sending it to her an email and saying, these are the struggles that I'm having. My wife don't even want to tell us. She says, don't tell me what you do at work. That's what she tells me. Yeah, I understand so, that. I mean, it's just, that's my partner. That's someone I should, my life partner, I should be able to talk to. And I say, please don't tell me. I don't want to hear all the trouble that you, the dangers you might have died today. Because mm -hmm. it scares her, it gives her anxiety. So I'm like, okay, all right, so who do I talk to now? I mean, is this, we're going to do this every week? We're going to do this every day? You're going to, I mean, I have bad days to talk day. to your best friend? You're going to talk to your, your other partners at work? You're going to, this group right here is connected forever. She was talking about having some of the issues and and having problems with seeing things and, and stuff like that. And I'm, I would suggest to her, talk to him, somebody who's got a ton of life experience, a ton of work experience, who's been, you said, I've seen this multiple times. So you have already kind of taught yourself how to deal with the incidents that you've had before. This one hit a little bit harder at home, but you can share the, the incidents that you've had with her, with each other. But my understanding is, I mean, firefighters and EMTs, they don't mind giving each other hugs. Uh, us cops, I ain't, no, I don't want no hug. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I just, yeah, I don't want to appear weak. I don't want to say like, oh, I can't handle this job. It's just, I can deal with it. So I'm okay, I can deal with it. It's just frustrating. I mean, you just get mad, you get angry. It's just like, you're trying to get through something and then your partner gets hit. I mean, it, it's, I understand it's part of the job and it's what we do, but then when there's, it's that expectations of if we could have been a little more safer, things could have been taken care of, it, it could have been avoided. But I understand it, it's accident, it happened and the drunk driver was drunk. But it's just, I mean, now it feels like I'm having a reaction that, who do I talk to now? I mean, I, my wife don't want to talk to me. I got coworkers, I don't want them to think I'm weak or they can't depend on me. So now what? I mean, it just, we gonna, uh, this is, every once in a while, this is great. I see the benefit of it, but I mean, hey, well, what? So you're it's a trainer. Right. If I can say, hey, Charlie, you know, we work together. You're a great guy. We see each other on calls, and, and now this kind of connects us. Mm -hmm. um, hey, brother, I'm here for you. I'm sorry for your loss. You come by the station, hang out, you can talk. I won't hug you. Okay. <laughs> and they make great food. Uh, make great food. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah, we just, we just like fast food. Scott. I appreciate that. Thank you. But your agency probably has a chaplaincy program, does it? Or Yeah. Yeah, Do you guys have an employee assistance program? Yeah, I don't want to talk to a psychiatrist telling me something's wrong with me, but I mean, but yeah. Well, we have, have to find one that's kind of vetted out for our quirky job that we do, yeah. that gets our culture. John, uh, can you touch on the cognitive? Yeah, so uh, I think everybody here has kind of touched on blaming someone. Uh, confusion, poor attention, poor decisions. Uh, like I was saying uh, to you, now is probably not the best time to make a, a big decision in your life. And that goes for everybody. Um, but th those are normal feelings. And, you know, I know you don't like that word normal, but uh, um, it's common. Okay? It's, it's going to happen. Um, raised or lowered alertness, uh, memory problems. Hypervigilance or just uh, being uh, aware of, of your surroundings. Um, you're going to go into places and, and uh, you're going to feel... Uh, That's normal. Anxious, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it is. And, um, you know, there's, uh, you're going go, to go places, you're going to do things, and things are going to trigger that in your brain. And, um, you know, just, just expect it. I guess. Be ready for it. Um, impaired thinking, nightmares, uh, having flashbacks. Uh, those are all, those are all going to happen. And the other thing is, um, you know, we all, we're all here kind of saying, 
uh, expect this and don't do this. Um, if over time, say tomorrow, um, you start feeling better for the next day and your partner isn't, recognize that and know that uh, it's it's okay to, to, to feel better, okay? Um, I think all of all of you uh, will feel better uh, over time, but just keep an eye on 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 everybody else, and keep 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 these things in mind uh, and watch for them, um, not only for yourself but uh, on, with with your coworkers. So, like they said, we're going to give you a bunch of these handouts uh, when we're finished, um, and I. I I urge everybody that we we discuss these or we have these debriefings with to take these and either put it on the refrigerator, put it on the counter, put it on the coffee table, wherever, so that your families, uh, your support networks, wherever it is that you are, they can see these because they're. I guarantee you they're going to be the first ones to, to see in you that change of, hey, something's just not right. And, I mean, like you said, we're... We're 10 feet tall and bulletproof, nothing happens to us. But that's how we get through through our day. So we've heard some of the hypervigilance and um, lack of sleep and nightmares. Has anybody else had any any other uh, symptoms? David. David. Mm -hmm. Have you had anything? Uh, you know, I've just, uh, you know, mainly I was just really pissed off about the equipment situation because I felt that, you know, as much as it was Amanda's responsibility, it was mine too. And so uh, mainly that's just been the whole thing for me. Um, uh, you know, proverbial kicking the dog when you get home. I mean, I've done I've done that quite done a bit, that. you know. Yep. Uh, Poor dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, my kids unfortunately end up end up taking a lot of it because you know I'm 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 mad. And you know this, it, it's it seems senseless that someone had to die and someone had to be injured just because of you know some inanimate object that we couldn't get to work, you know. And so, you know, uh, yeah, just dealing with anger throughout the day has been really my issue. Okay. All right. Remind me after we're done talking. I'll talk to you some more about that. Right. Thanks. Anybody else want to share some of their? Symptoms they might have been having? Mine, as I said before, it's just that quick anger. I mean, there's just, I'm frustrated. I'm mad a lot of little things. I'm worried about, I don't want to lose my humanity. I'm just, I, I mean, I used to be a nice guy when I started the department. I mean, go to church all the time. Always, I mean, I was, I liked who I was. I, I don't I, I don't like the guy who I am. It just, I, I'm just too mad. I mean, like he said, get the dog. I went home, me and my wife had an argument. Threw something against the wall, tell her to get out of my face. I want to talk about it right now. Kick the dog out of my way. My daughter comes running down the hallway. Dad, you want a hug? I'm like, go to your room. Me and your mom are talking. Oh. And I sit down on the chair, started flipping through the channel. <laughs> Man, what a jerk was I. Mm -hmm. Man, I just, when you think about those things, you really hate yourself. And that's not you. I mean, I'm supposed to be a well-trained, competent professional. Is this the first debriefing that you've been to? I've been to small one-on-ones, talking to coworkers. We have peer support with our uh, department and it's usually one-on-one -on -one, and I like those. This is different, kind of gives me that I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. It gives me a different perspective on things. I like the one-on-ones better because it's, I don't I don't want to cry for y'all, but I don't want pure week. That's where I think the one-on-ones are better for me, but this is a, a good this is a good thing with it. You see the different perspectives and different disciplines that, that I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It has nothing to do with you being weak. You've been doing this for 21 years, and everything that you've done in 21 years is completely abnormal to everything that your spouse does and everybody outside the circle does. What we do for a living, seeing people smeared in their, fe their own feces, seeing people uh, dead, accidents, uh, seeing spouses beat on their spouses, yeah. that's not normal for other people to see. But that's our normal yeah. of what we see every day. I get so desensitized, just like, eh, okay, just another day in the neighborhood, as I said before. And it's just, and I, I don't want to. I feel like I'm losing myself. I'm losing who I was, and I want to care. I, I'm getting. I don't care anymore. And it just, 
it goes back to what I said earlier about having that sack that you can only stuff so much in. Yeah, I really hit a note. And so what do you do? What do you do for yourself right now? Well, I, I like cigars. I go to my cigar club that I hang out with guys. I don't, I'm not a big drinker. I'm not, I don't really drink. I mean, I may have a scotch or a whiskey or something with a cigar, but I'm not a big drinker. But it's usually I, this club that's I go to, we sit and watch the game, watch the sports, or even just talk. I mean, just that's that's my peer support. That's someone I can turn to and, and enjoy a good cigar and enjoy the company. And I mean, it's just but guys that don't work in our department, some uh, from other agencies or even just from other walks of life or other uh, types of jobs, but. I don't know, that's, that's my relaxing time. When I go home, I just don't feel supported by my wife. I don't feel, and I feel like I'm too, I don't want to go home because I don't want to lash out to them. I don't want to, them to be my punching bag, them to be, to get the effects of what my job does to them. Mm -hmm. And it just, and I've been looking in the mirror lately and I don't like who I am. I feel that way too. Sometimes, you know, at work, where you know, there's chaos and we're able to control the scene, and then there's mitigation to that, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you go home and feel like there's no control there, and you want to try to control it, and you can't, and it's difficult. And talking it out, I mean, you, your partners, your buddies in your cigar, is it a club or, or something like that? Yeah, it's just a, this place, but it's, we call it the club, but... Oh, okay. Um, so talking with those, the military has what they call their battle buddies. Yeah. Um, our B partners, um, the people in the in the box with you guys and the ambulance on your fire truck, we're with those people oftentimes more than we're with our own families. Definitely. See them more. And, see and, my kids. and that's why they become our family, yeah. um, because we share those experiences. And it doesn't make you weak to share that with them, which you, you've been on for 21 years. I'm assuming you train, right? Yeah, instructor. You, in fact, you're one of the instructors with your department. Yeah. Would you ever turn away one of the younger people coming on your department if they... No, I tried, I tried to point out the hazards, the what mm -hmm. to look out for. Uh, certain, because there are some people you work with, that's where I, I'm real big on being professional and doing your job. I, I, I time and place to have fun and enjoy the job. But when it comes to taking care of business, there's a hat we need to wear that mm -hmm. it's just, hey, time to, it's, uh, when the proverbial stuff hits the fan, they say, it's time to take care of business. It's time to get in the game and get your game face on, they say. Um, and we always do, when we get into do, do the job, we're checking our equipment, make sure we have everything. We always do a self-check, buddy check, make sure we're good. But uh, sometimes I just need that after work. But then you have to take the hat off yeah. and Charlie comes out. That's and it's hard. no longer the uniform. That's it's hard. no longer the agency, but it's Charlie. Yeah, but it's just, it's hard to do that because it, it's so part of your life. It's mm -hmm. so who you are. Like as he's pointed out earlier, you go into a room, that hypervigilance, that, that's, that's who we are. That's just, you're that, uh, you have that combat mindset. And every time I'm off work, I still go to the back of the room, put my back to the wall and face the exit. Every time I go, what if I is there? What happens if someone came in the room? That's constantly in your head, constantly. Am I paranoid? I try to tell the cadets, you're not paranoid, you're just prepared. But sometimes, am I paranoid? Well, that's vigilance and hypervigilance yeah. is almost different. We had a girl that went through a situation and she was to the point where she was sleeping at night holding her gun on her chest so she would be prepared. That's almost hyper vigilant. That's too much. It's good that you guys are here addressing these issues. And um, like we said earlier, where none of us are supermen or women, but we put on our turnouts, we put on our vest. And then when we go home and we take that stuff off, and it's like, hey, take the garbage. Hey, do this. I'm like, it's, don't you know who I am? No, now you're just Charlie. And it is hard making that transition. So we're going to step into another stage here in just a little bit, but kind of give you guys a few more things to think about. And, I'm sorry if I'm getting you off track. No, you're fine. This is what this is about.